Hey, comrade, listen. Do you ever have that urge to hit your friendly neighborhood Nilsson on something special, but your modern tactical boots just feel absolutely boring and tasteless, while your $50 cool mock socks have a big hole from your toenail? If that's the case, then you tuned into the right video. First off, welcome. I'm Aramid, and today on Spark Project we're taking a look at some footwear of the Soviet Armed Forces. Of course, there is much more to Soviet Army footwear than we can show in one video, but to get a general picture, it's a good idea to start with jack boots. We have two pairs on hand to show the two very different sides of the same medal. But you might ask, why jack boots? It mostly has to do with a lot of mud being present during at least half the year within the Eurasian continental line. Although numerous types of lace boots did episodically appear on the Russian kit of equipment after the mass introduction of jack boots, they did not stick as a majority for a long time. In fact, shortly prior to World War I, the Russian Imperial Army debated about switching fully to Western manner of boots and puttees. But among others, one argument brushed its initiative away for decades to come. And that argument is something called Partyanki. They are foot wraps, mostly worn with jack boots. Here we have the winter and the summer variation. These were standard issue for the Soviet army as a part of the underclothing kit. The summer partyanki are thin and are made of crude cotton. The winter ones are thicker and are made of a soft material called baika, which remotely resembles fleece. If worn properly, partyanki are much better with jack boots than any socks for one reason. When walking in jack boots, the heel of the foot is not stationary, it raises and lowers with every step. This causes any sock, no matter how tight, to crawl downwards, leading to irritation and buildup of moisture, which does ensure a one-way ticket to the land of French foot. Some people do wear socks under partyanki, but that's a questionable decision. It is crucial to put on the partyanki properly for them to be any good. There are multiple ways, but here is a recommended one. As you can see, it's a rectangle. The foot goes on the side, away from the corner, where the corner itself wraps around the foot from one side and the rest wraps from the other. This way two tails form, pulling in which makes a sock-like shape. The far corner is pulled towards the knee while the remaining one wraps once more around the ankle. The final tail hides under either fold and the flap left at the toes folds up or down as you like. The process is mirrored for the other foot. Partyanki may not hold together as is, so you would want to put it straight into the boot. There is one major advantage that partyanki have over regular socks. A single pair of foot wraps, on practice, replaces a whole four pairs. If they get wet or dirty from walking, you can just redo them from top to bottom, and if you need to change them again, you can flip them to the other side and repeat respectively. When changed this way, the side that is higher on the leg dries out while the other one is in use. When they get completely soaked, there is a simple way to dry them out using the jack boots themselves. They can be wrapped around as such and left near a campfire, for example, or just out on the open. Going back to history, it was the availability and cultural preference of these over more expensive and short-lasting socks that caused the Russian Imperial Army to keep the jack boots in service to be later inherited by the Red Army and so on. And as we are done with foot wraps, we can finally move on to the jack boots. These are Kirza boots, or also known as Kirzachi. Such boots were issued to enlisted personnel and sometimes to NCOs of the Soviet Army for everyday use on the march and in combat. This pair is from the mid-Cold War period, although the design saw little change from similar articles of the 40s or even the 30s. It was this kind that served from the late 1950s well into the 1990s. All post-Soviet militaries were inherited by their respective states wearing these. The name comes from a material used to manufacture them. A leather substitute called kirza, made of a crude textile coated with artificial latex. The material was introduced in the 1930s for the Red Army to compensate for a temporary leather deficit. But the resulting product was much better than expected, so the material was used for many purposes. The mass adoption of jack boots is partly attributed to this material. The jack boots are tailored from four parts. Vamp, counter, the shaft, and the strip holding the back of the shaft together. On the boots, Kirza specifically is only used on the shaft. It has the highest surface area and lower material requirements, where the rest of the body is natural leather, including the back strip. The sole is a combination of leather and rubber, so is the heel. It is constructed using brass hobnails, which is a prominent feature of most Soviet military footwear. The protector patterns vary. Some common examples are traktor, yoka, and what we have here is nicknamed kapeka for corn. The sole is marked with a factory emblem, the manufacturing date, third quadrant of 1972, and the shoe size, Soviet or Russian 42nd. The rest of the markings are on the inside of the shaft. 
Here you can also see that Kyrza is indeed a textile-based material. We see factory markings, quality stamps, and what is interesting, a price marking of 10 rubles and 94 kopekas. As I found out recently, these Kyrza boots were produced identical for both the military and the civilian market. The price markings make these technically civilian boots. They also come with insoles, which are upgraded with a layer of extra fabric. What is very important with any jack boots is to get the right fit. If a pair that sits too tight will eventually stretch out from a pair that wobbles around on your feet, no partanki will save you. Their objective upside is reliability. As you can see, they're pretty worn out, but it's hard to imagine what has to be done to render them unusable. They got to me in a much neglected condition, and it only took some cleaning and basic leather care to get them back in shape. The maintenance of Kirza is identical to that of natural leather. Now let's take a look at a pair of chrome boots for comparison. Chrome is a type of natural leather. These are from the same time period as the last pair, but were issued as a part of dress uniform to officers, some NCOs, and rarely to enlisted personnel for ceremonial duty and festive occasions. While being rarely worn, most of such boots go around in close to mint condition for decades, and these are no exception. With that in mind, for everyday use, officers got a different kind of jack boots, also fully made of leather, but of lower grade and with more practical and durable features in design. These, however, are still in ceremonial service. They are tailored similarly to the Kyrza boots, with a vamp, a counter, and a shaft, liking only the strip of leather on the back. The sole and the heel are almost entirely layered leather, with only the outermost portion being synthetic. Hobnails here are present in a similar fashion, only with some being covered by a glued-on protector. With these being parade boots, not meant for extensive use, the protector pattern is limited to an anti-slip texture. The sole is marked with technical numbers as well as the size, 41st for this pair. Looking inside the shop, we see acceptance stamps, technical numbers, and an interesting factory marking. It says that these were produced on a factory number 4 in Kiev. The manufacture date is also here, November 1987. The inside of the shaft is coated for comfort with soft and light leather. Insoles should be present, but I got these already liking them. The boots are also equipped with ears for putting them on. The design is different from the Kyrza boots with how they follow the shape of the foot more closely and sit more tightly. They are generally more elegant and neat in my opinion. The leather quality allows them to be polished very well, and it is a general custom to do so. They are dull because these are from storage. I find wearing these as comfortable as wearing military jack boots can get, especially with the right fit and proper patyanku. Of course, after decades of storage, the leather can stiffen up a bit, but that can be fixed easily by applying a leather rejuvenation lotion or if not that, at least some good shoe wax. Speaking of shoe wax, I should also mention the maintenance routine. It is generally the same for either type. After use, it is recommended to simply remove any debris, clean with a wet cloth, dry and apply wax. Polish if required. I use the Russian-made shoe wax for military footwear, Soviet waffle towels, and a basic wooden shoe brush. Polishing is easier with old socks. Comparing the two pairs also shows how the lower part containing the foot is hard on the dress boots while being soft on the kirzechi. The quality difference is obvious, but that is not because enlisted personnel were treated towards equipment. It is important to remember that the Soviet army was a conscript-based force, with only the officers and some NCOs technically serving on something like contract bases. The enlisted servicemen got their boots to be used for their service time, only lasting up to a maximum of two years, while any officer equipment, on the other hand, was issued with much longer periods of time in mind. Overall, jack boots have some advantages, like their reliability, lack of laces and vulnerable parts, the area from ankle up is well protected and they are also practically mud and waterproof. They are easier to maintain as well. However, there is almost no breathability to talk about, wearing them in hot weather is a nightmare and wearing them in general takes skill. For example, during the war in Afghanistan, the Soviet contingent entered the country wearing these. The unbearable climate and the need to traverse dry mountainous terrain forced the soldiers to start getting their hands on other types of footwear by any means possible. This went on until the Berze type boots were introduced. When it comes to wearing them in practice, don't get me wrong, they are morally obsolete and they have been for a long time. Of course, for any serious use, modern tactical combat or hiking boots would have the upper hand in almost any situation. But they are not as wild to use as it might seem at first glance. Either way, they are a neat piece of history and the skill of wearing them with comfort is a cool one to have. I hope that you, comrade, found value in this video regardless of what's on your feet. If so, make sure to let us know if you're interested in seeing a part 2 on the topic. And this wraps it up for today, but make sure to stick around on the channel for more stuff like this. Dalai!